nothing you can do. Like that. Yeah. Oh. Well, we finally made it to the Bahamas, but there were certainly times it didn't come easy. There's nothing you can do. My back is killing me already. Oh, you can't do much about it. Like that. Oh. Is, this, is this worth it? Is this smart? Oh my God, I love my wife. No. It was not smart, but yes, it was 100% worth it, and yes, it was totally insane. What we did was we took a 39-foot speedboat from Miami to Bimini, from Bimini deep in the heart of the Exumas, in the Bahamas, and it was an epic experience. Was it always fun? Nope. Because of a horrible weather window, there were times it was a complete mess, and it was scary as hell. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that time for anything in the world. We learned and we grew so much. Stay tuned for one of the most entertaining adventure episodes you'll ever see. And I love seeing my So this epic adventure actually starts in Maine, where my wife and I live half the year. We're going to go from Portland, Maine to Boston, Massachusetts, all the way down to Miami, where a boat's waiting for us. Then we're going to meet up with FPC, which is Florida Power Boating Club, to start the journey from Miami to Bimini and then to the Exumas, which is deep in the Bahamas. We're gonna be gone for a week, so the first thing we need to do is just get organized. We need to go grocery shopping, grab our food, some drinks, plenty of water. Not much is available in the Bahamas and we need to make sure our boat is stocked. And then we take care of her, we tuck her in for the night, we button her up and we head back to Trump Tower where we have our very important captain's meeting. This is so important to pay attention. This meeting is going to tell you everything you need to know, all the details, so you don't get lost or stranded or sink or like not come back from the Bahamas. So this one's kind of important to make. This is also where I do my last weather review before we leave. It's also my first inkling that it might get a little messy. I'm not sure if I tell Sarah this at this point. And once the captain's meeting's done, we go out to eat, but not before a little bit of levity. All right, Sarah and I are about to take a high-speed cat across the ocean, middle of the ocean, to Bimini and the Bahamas. And we're about to do the actual most dangerous thing we'll do in the next week. Crossing Miami traffic and not getting pancaked. You ready, honey? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, everybody, be on your toes. Be on your toes and just be ready to dodge. These guys don't, no. they actually don't give a shit about you. So you just gotta be ready to dodge, dodge traffic. Honey, be honest. How many people recognize you at, at Hall Over? Three. How many people do we see at Hall Over? Three. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna take this time to thank everybody that's been watching our channel for the last several months. It's made it worth it for us. And it's so funny to see Sarah get, she gets so, uh, I don't know, she gets so embarrassed when people recognize her. It's so funny when people come up to her and say, hey, I know you, I've seen your videos. It's definitely one of my, one of my favorite things to watch. I've just always been shy. Thank you again, everybody. It's been one heck of a trip and thank you so much for watching. We have the best fans on earth. Man, oh man, do I get distracted. Okay, back on track. Where were we? Oh yeah, we were waking up the morning of the great departure. Here we go. This is exciting. Whew. What happens if we lose our motors in the Gulf Stream? Where are we going to end up? What happens? <laughs> All the camera stuff from drones to GoPros to where we're going to hang the flag. <sighs> so much to think about. My brain's about to explode. <laughs> it's an empty lobby. Nobody's here. We're the only ones up right now, ready to go. It feels good. I think our Uber's waiting for us. Over and out. All right, we're finally at the dock the morning of. I'm a little jittery to tell you the truth. This is a little nerve wracking because we're doing our first leg. And the first leg is, well, it's interesting. We're doing 60 miles, which isn't a long way, 
but you're doing 60 miles over part of the open Atlantic. It is the Gulf Stream. It is four or 5,000 feet deep there. You have major Gulf Stream currents. You have tides, winds, and there's nothing out there. It's just one little speck of an island you're trying to hit called Bimini. So you want to go with a group, which is what we're doing here. We're going with the Florida Power Boating Club. This is our first time, so we're going to go with the group. And then after that, we might just split off from the group. We'll see. And before you know it, we are in the water trying to catch a weather window that never really existed. But man, oh man, it makes things really stressful from cameras to helicopters to just safety equipment. We're just trying to make things work. And we're going to keep it real here, but it certainly gets stressful. The wind started to pick up. Everyone, we're running like 10 minutes late and everyone just got in their boat and just got out of there. So we are definitely in a rush and it's stressful. I'm stressed, my wife's stressed. It's not supposed to be what it's like, but. And that's boating. Well, it shouldn't be, but this is, all, this is Miami. This is Hall Over Inlet. We're leaving Hall Over Inlet to go to Bimini. We're gonna stay in Bimini for two or three days. And then we're gonna go from Bimini to basically the center of the Bahamas, Nassau, and then we're gonna be doing some island hopping, some camping. We're gonna actually camp out of this thing. It's gonna be super fun. I hope, without the stress, once we're there, we're gonna just de-stress. Both have our e perms which will be attached to our light vests, and our VHF Pro radio. Yep, so we do have a radio, an actual hardened radio on the boat. Um, you have to get one specially made for this boat because it's so aerodynamic, there's no place to put the antenna or, or anything. It's not really meant to be offshore, so we actually had them install a lay-down antenna in the back. Um, so we do actually have a radio, a hardened radio uh, CD for this boat. Pretty cool. Um, and then we do have the, the go, the throw. We have microphones, lapel microphones. You, you'll see these here. We have our life jackets, my lanyard. I'll show that again. This is my lanyard. So this goes around my leg. It goes around my um, my actual ankle, so I can kind of move around and not pull the uh, the cord. All right, in the moment we've been waiting for for so long, we're about to take off. We're actually at Hallover Inlet. We're just inside the bridge, and you can see Stu behind us. He's getting ready. He's going to lead the pack. We're going to form an arrow going through this whole thing. So we're going to let him lead, and then just kind of stagger off each side of him. And as you're about to see, it gets a little sporty on the inlet going out. Stu's going, honey. Let's sit down. Okay. All right. This is the calm before the storm. Look at us. We have absolutely no idea what's in store for us. Uh, good luck, you two. Okay, it's not pretty. All right, so we're and we've all seen boats go through Hallover Inlet. We know what that looks like. But what does it look like to actually be in a boat going through Hallover Inlet with, I'd say, like fours to sixes standing? Remember, video never does the sea state justice, like not even close. So you might want to multiply whatever you see on camera by like 10. Um, honey, more like a billion. It's finally time to get this 390 up on plane. Bimini, here we come. All right, just watch these guys. I don't know what they're doing. Hold on. Hold on. While the inlet was a little bit steep and deep, we end up taking a right south and we go 10 miles to Government Cut. Now in this time, the waves were still probably threes to fours, but we were in the trough. We were side two, so it was actually pretty comfortable. We were able to get some airtime, some cool helicopter shots, and we just rolled coal for that 10 miles. All the boats stayed behind Stu in kind of an arrow formation to just give a really cool shot for the helicopter and make it look like one team. We got some swelly swellies here. Whoa. What? I, I saw that kid like all of a sudden bend over, like it looked like he went up and then, but. These are rollers, these aren't bad. This helicopter shot came out so good. I'm so glad we, we did that. Um, I did have to show a little bit of restraint though. I did want to bury the throttles at this time because this was the only time in the first leg of this whole journey that the sea state and direction was actually perfect. You can seaweed. Don't want to hit the seaweed. 
Yeah, I forgot about this. Seaweed is actually a really important thing to avoid in some of these high-speed boats because they're very sensitive to water inlet for cooling. And so you have to do everything you can to try to avoid that seaweed, especially at the beginning of a trip like this, because you could actually plug your water inlet strainer and your trip is already over before it even started. I got buoys up here. No way, buoys are for the beach. Right? Yeah, we gotta turn it in. Let's do this. For me at this point, I just wanted to get to Bimini. I didn't really care too much more about going south the, the full 10 miles to get the helicopter shot. I just wanted to turn left and get eastward and get to Bimini before the seas blew up. But what we didn't know is none of it really mattered. The seas were already torn up and we're about to see just how much. Up behind you, on your left, between you and Stu. Okay. Land, let me know how I'm doing on land. You're fine on land. Chop up. Okay, and maybe a two to three, maybe even four foot side rolling. See, I cannot believe how steady my wife holds this camera. As you can see, as we approach government cut, the seas get a little bit more saucy. Just in time for our run eastward to Bimini. Is this the seas the whole way? Yeah. We did 10 miles south, going down from North Miami to Southern Miami to government cut, all over to government cut. It was for the helicopter shots. So we're all going to come to a stop right here. And then we're gonna, we're actually gonna go 90 degrees. And just think, that's the very first part of this leg, just the first 10 miles of what will end up being close to a thousand miles. Follow the rising sun. That's starting to peak out. Yeah, Finally. you see this? We got some land over here, honey. I'm gonna hit that. Right now we're in government cut, and government cut's got an outgoing tide and an easterly wind, so they're standing up, and uh, we're just trying to navigate them, not go super fast, not break anything, so we can make it to Bimini. Boating, you know, like this can be violent. It can be pretty rugged on the boat, so you want to get there. It's like full wheeling, off-roading, but like rough-ass Jeep trail. That's what it's like. It's like a rough-ass Jeep trail for three hours, hoping you don't break something. Hold on. I think he's slowing down. We're going to be doing the 90 here soon. All right. All right, yep. Yeah. All right, we gotta turn. We gotta turn into the wind so we don't dose our windshield. Yeah. Oh, too late. Too late. Okay. Yeah, honey, that's a beautiful shot. <laughs> We're now collecting everybody at Government Cut, getting ready to go eastward after the 10-mile trek southward out of North Miami. And I do apologize for the camera; it's a little bit shaky. But when you're just sitting still here in these uh, these seas, it's certainly hard to keep it still. But we'll still roll the film because it is beautiful, and then we're gonna get on plane. Jesus, this is gonna be a long trip like this. This is, I mean, it's got to lay down a little bit, or this is gonna be a really long trip. We're only doing about 40 miles an hour right now. And we can go much faster, but I don't want to kick my boat's ass before we get there. Or your wife. Or my wife. Uh -huh. oh, hold on. Yeah, that wasn't as bad as I thought. The back end just dropped off on it. We're still. 
All right, so here we go. Doing the crossing from Miami to Bimini. This 60 mile stretch started out, well, kind of okay. It wasn't super bad. Right out government cut, but within a couple miles, we knew it was going to be a long ride. And again, camera never shows the actual sea state. This looks so docile, it drives me nuts. But here's a perfect example. If you look behind us, you'll see a 39 foot Top Gun cigarette boat being stood straight up and the seas look flat. The camera just never does it justice and it's so annoying. Averaging threes, but every once in a while you get that four to five, so you can't, you can't get any speed up. I'm gonna lower the trim, hold on. This is a steep one. Oh, Jesus. I, I lowered the trim, our windshield's gonna get a little bit more wet, but. We're gonna be able to knife this a little bit better. Stand it up a little bit less. Yep. How are you doing, hon? Okay. Hold on. No. The vehicles are smashing. Yeah. I mean, we're smashing, but not as bad. If we, if, if we can keep this frequency up, we'll be fine. If it gets any more frequent, it's gonna be real bad. Hold on. Oh, damn it. We cased it. That's what we don't wanna do. Oh. You know what I'm just realizing watching this now is the change in attitude. We started off so happy and you guys will slowly see our attitudes go from hope and happiness to despair and in frustration. It's interesting. By the way, this is not supposed to be the worst part. Hold on. The worst part is supposed to be another 20 miles. Hold on. In this full Bahamas adventure, there's just so much content, we can't stuff it all in one or two, or maybe even three episodes. So stay tuned for the next episode, which will start where we left off here from kind of like the beginning of that crossing from Miami to Bimini. But after that, the adventure really starts once we get to Bimini. We find deserted islands, we camp out on them, we find shipwrecks, we find airplane crashes, we swim with turtles, I swim with bull sharks. Honestly, the first leg of this whole trip isn't even a blip on the radar when it comes to the actual bigger picture of this adventure. We can't wait to show you. Boat safe, boat happy, over and out. One's flanking you. I don't know what it is, but one's your nine o'clock. Honey, what's behind you? Wow, I mean, that's easier said than done, but I'll find